Good afternoon or good morning, ladies and gentlemen, depending on where you are in the world. All right, good to see some people joining already. We are going to give everyone a few minutes to join and then we're going to rock and roll with the webinar today. Hello, Sue from Sweden. Good to see you join in. Awesome. Good stuff. We've got a few people uh, who I'm going to promote across onto the panel as well. Bear with me. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Good to see everyone. Okay, so what we're gonna do before we really crack on is go through a little bit of an agenda of how this is gonna work and uh, what we're really gonna focus on during the next hour. Now, I wanna keep this as concise and focused as possible because I'm conscious of everyone's time and I know that uh, a lot of the time these kind of webinars can go on quite long and there can be a lot of stuff and it can be quite fluffy and I don't want that to be like this at all. I want to make sure that this webinar is to the point, direct and valuable for everybody on the call. Hi Yusuf, good to see you. Uh, so what we're going to do, focus on an agenda and how this will work and then uh, what we'll do is go through a and a for everybody uh, and really make sure that we're focusing on what you guys need to move forwards. Okay, so the topic of this webinar is how to start your own online business and what you ultimately need or what challenges you're facing that are holding you back from starting. Okay, so let's share. I'm just gonna quickly start uh, covering a couple of bits and then we will rock and roll. Okay, so as I say, this is gonna be a live Q&A and what you'll see in Zoom down the bottom is you'll see a chat button that you can click and type any questions that you have, anything that you would like me to cover during this next hour. This is about you, okay? This is for you to get the answers to the things that you need to move forwards. I don't have many slides on this deck. This isn't gonna be like a 100 slide presentation. This is more, more just a couple of things that we're gonna focus on along with your questions. So the agenda for the next hour is two minute overview of who I am for anyone who doesn't know anything about me or has only you know recently like joining this webinar for the first time, for example. Uh, we'll go through a quick five minute overview. I've got a typo there. Five minute overview of what it actually takes to succeed in online business. And this is based on observing the, for example, 3000 people in my private entrepreneurial network. Look at what's the difference between the people who create results and the people who don't create results. And then we're gonna go through a Q&A from your questions. So as I say, if you've literally just joined, joined in the last 30 seconds, down the bottom of this uh, webinar, you will see a chat button. Click that, type your questions, and I will do my best to cover them. Um, quick heads up, I'm almost certainly not gonna have a chance to cover every single person's question because I've got some from before this webinar even started as well. So it is gonna be probably first come, first serve. Apologies in advance if I can't cover your question directly, but I'll try my best. Uh, number four, while we're gathering the questions, I'm gonna blitz a roadmap, a roadmap to success. So creating your plan and what it actually um, involves to build that strategy and then follow it to create a result. And then also the best business models to focus on. There's two that I'm gonna recommend, uh, which in my opinion are the best ways to create time, financial and geographical freedom. Okay, and then we're gonna cover the Q&A. This is gonna be the bulk of this webinar, it's gonna be your questions. So I'm gonna cover what's coming up for you guys, what you need help with, what, what you're missing out on, or you know, um, whatever's holding you back. And then finally, we're gonna cover, based on your questions, what your next steps are to move forward from here. Okay, so I'm gonna make an assumption that if you're joining this webinar, about how to start an online business, then chances are you have a level of interest in starting an online business. Now, typically the people that um, my company will focus on are those coming from you know, corporate backgrounds or careers that they're unfulfilled in, jobs where they're trading time for money, maybe they're working for a boss and they're just you know, sick of trading all of their time doing that. And they've maybe had some sort of realization that the way life is going, and the direction, the path that they're heading down 
maybe is, is not the kind of life that they want to live. And so in one way or another, a lot of people that we work with through one of my main companies is uh, those who are focused on, they want to make a change. They want something different. They want to build a business around their passion. They want to take back more control in their life. They want the time freedom, the financial freedom, the geographical freedom. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this webinar on basically on how to help someone transition from a situation they're unfulfilled in, typically corporate career or job, into creating more freedom and more control in their own lives through online business. All right, so let me just have a very quick update of where we are in the chat. Um, also, when I'm on Zoom and doing webinars, sometimes. Uh, Technic, there can be technical challenges. Uh, Anna Fellows, you're not very loud. I have my volume up. Hopefully, you can hear me now. I'm trying to speak loudly, and the uh, the AirPods normally should be okay. Uh, let me know in chat if anyone's having audio problems. Um, make sure the volume is turned fully up at your end as well. Uh, we have got a couple of questions, Anna. Yeah, you're welcome. No, no problem. A um, couple of questions, and also we do have. Mm -hmm. just share screen again we do have a couple of questions from before right so just so you know if you filled in this questionnaire here uh the these questions are going to get covered shortly because i noticed there was quite a common theme that was uh that was coming up all right so we're going to make sure that we cover those so quick two minutes of who i am if uh you've never come across me before or you've just joined this webinar for the first time and you know don't know me at all so my name's Dan Holloway and I now have, it's actually four companies, but I've just listed three of the, the main ones here. Uh, the first business, the main business that I started three years ago in September, 2016 is Scrap the 9 to 5. And that's really what I think most people on this webinar will be here through. They'll have, you know, um, uh, either signed up to receive emails from Scrap the 9 to 5, my company, um, or they'll be, they'll have watched a video series from a company that I'm partnered with, which is called SFM. I'll touch on that more in a second. Uh, but generally speaking, Scrap the 9 to 5 is about helping people start online businesses. That's what we're focusing on here. So this was me back in uh, corporate software sales. I don't know why I'm wearing a princess tiara. <laughs> I, I can't remember the situation, um, but it's the only photo that I could find of me actually at my desk at work. And this was way back when I first started in that career, like uh, I think it would have been maybe 2012 or so. And I was in, in prospecting. So it's before I got into uh, um, corporate sales properly. Uh, these were some of the guys that I used to work with. So again, I was in a career of corporate software sales. And it was an environment where, you know, we had the sales floor. There was a lot of guys there at all different levels. Um, if you've seen Wolf of Wall Street, it was like a tamer version of Wolf of Wall Street. And then it would get to the weekend and everyone would go out. And it was good fun when, when I was younger, but quickly it got to a point where I was like, this isn't the kind of lifestyle that I want anymore. Um, did do things like this is a Vegas pool party. And that was an incentive that we um, that, that I won and these guys won as well to, uh, to get on this pool party. So there was like perks of the job, but as I say, it, it reached a point where I was working 60 to 70 hours every week. I was doing the same thing. Every quarter was just about close more deals, close more deals, close more deals. And I didn't agree as well with the, like the, I suppose, ethics behind it and, and how, um, the philosophy was not really about what's best for a business. It's more about just generate revenue from the company. And I wanted to get out of that situation. You know, I wanted to really start creating freedom in my own life. And then in September, 2016, I started my first company, started my first online business, had absolutely no clue what I was doing. Like I've never done anything like this before. I've never been an entrepreneur. I've never, like, I don't have a marketing background or anything like that. I don't particularly have any technical skills. Um, so when I first started, I was way in over my head, didn't know what I was doing and just dived in from the word go. But I found a community and I started joining webinars like this one that we're on right now. And I started connecting with people. I started attending live events. I started um, you know, contributing and sort of putting myself out there where I could. I started finding mentors. So meeting people who were like experts in online business and learning firsthand from them, right? Like this guy, some of you might know this guy, Stuart Ross. Uh, here he is again. This is a retreat in the Caribbean. Um, this was a, a, an event called Momentum Day. 
And I started connecting with more and more people in the community, spending time with them, immersing, like learning firsthand. Um, this one here was a meetup that we had with uh, a group of people who are now really close friends. Uh, we were called Team Super Cool McCawesome Sauce, <laughs> which I always laugh about still. Uh, you'll notice in this picture as well, this is a cool Photoshop because um, uh, you'll notice that each person is in there twice. Like I'm hide, hold, holding myself up on the banister. Just a nice little touch. I didn't do this, by the way. It was uh, the guy, Alex, who's standing just to my left that did this photo. Um, again, more meetups. This is, uh, this is me and my brother. So I'm the taller one. He's the younger one. And the reason I put this slide in here is because when I started in business, the second company that I launched was a small web design agency, which I created to get my brother, my little brother, Jason, um, he's not so little anymore, uh, but get him out of his job that he was also not happy in. So I wanted to highlight that when you start down this path and you really start building your own future, it's not just about you. It's about what you then become capable of to help the other people that you care about in your life. Right. So it's really important to always keep the bigger picture in mind. Um, then I started traveling. So I started getting business results. Things were going well. Revenue was coming in. Started traveling. This is me posing like a dick in the Grand Canyon. This is me posing like a dick in South Africa, posing, <laughs> posing in Safra in Vietnam, posing in Chamonix in France. I seem to like this pose. I probably need a new one. This was China. Uh, this was, I think that was Thailand. And then that was definitely Thailand. That was, I was distracted enough by the elephants to not pose like a dick there, which is nice. Um, and all the time that I'm doing this traveling, I'm also working from the laptop, geographical freedom. Um, basically every business that I either build or teach people how to build is focused on geographical freedom. You don't need an office. You don't need to be physically based anywhere. You can, uh, as long as you've got a laptop, as long as you've got internet, <laughs> you can pretty much build whatever you like from your laptop or you can sleep <laughs> instead of working, which is obviously what's happening here. All right. So. At that point, after the travels and the adventures, which was great fun, really enjoyed it, had a really good time. But then I started asking a lot more bigger questions like, what really is the value that I want to create? What's the impact that I want to have? What, what's my purpose? You know, why am I here? What can I do that's going to actually give back and support people and help other people change their lives as well? And that was when I started um, you know, talking at events and really focusing on sharing the things that I'd learned and really putting that education out there to help other people make the start as well. All right. And this, this is a mastermind retreat that we did. This is a recent event, meeting awesome people, speaking at an event, speaking, meeting people, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So that's kind of a little bit of background of where sort of where my journey started so again as i say no experience no technical skills like this isn't anything that i did before it was just immersion it was just i'm gonna do this i'm gonna make this happen i don't care what it takes and i got the right education i found the right community i took the steps i took action it was at times terrifying frustrating um infuriating <laughs> you know this is part of the journey of entrepreneurship and this is now what we're going to focus on right now in this webinar. It's how do you make that start and begin that journey and what does it actually take? And I'm gonna just sort of give you a heads up as well that there's gonna be absolutely none of the usual stuff that you might see on other webinars of this sort of um, topic. I'm not, there's not gonna be anything along the lines of, right, if you wanna get rich quick in 30 days and this is how you're gonna do it and everyone can succeed and blah, 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 blah. None of that shit here, right? No bullshit. This is straight up real talk. What does it actually take? And with that in mind, I'm going to begin this conversation by pointing out that only 5% of people who start this journey will succeed. That's the way it is, right? 95% of people will fail. Now, there's a distinction that we can make, right? There's a distinction that we can make about exactly how or what is it that separates the 95% from the 5%. And so one of the most powerful ways that I've looked at this throughout my own journey is asking myself, if I was 100% certain, and this is, I kind of asked this before I started. So I was like, if I was 100% certain that I was going to succeed, if I just made a start, and if I was 100% certain that I was capable of building a successful business, 
And if I was 100% certain that online business was real and it was the best way for me to create the life that I wanted, I would 100% start. Okay, so I'll ask you, ask you the same thing. If you were 100% certain that you were going to succeed in creating the life you want by making a start, and if you were 100% certain that you were capable, like you had the technical skills, you had the education, you had the support, whatever it is, if you knew 100% that you were capable, and if you had 100% belief that online business was real and was the best path for you, would you make a start? And that for me, when I got clear about that from the word go, that allowed me to approach this with the right attitude. And I, I realized if I wasn't doing it, right, if those three things were true, and if I wasn't making a start, it's likely because I either didn't believe truly that I was actually going to succeed if I made a start, or it's that I wasn't 100% certain that I was capable. Or it's that I didn't actually believe that online business was real or was the right path. Okay. Because again, if I was certain I could succeed, and if I was certain that, that if I just started, I was going to succeed, and if I was certain that this was the right path, why wouldn't I start? There'd be no reason not to. So one of those three things had to be missing if I wasn't starting. And so if we're focusing on these three things, we can realize that if we're not doing what it takes if we're not taking the steps it's because of one of these three things and therefore what we're going to focus on in this webinar is a distinct way of thinking that will allow you to make the choice about whether you're definitely going to be in the five percent of people who succeed or whether you're definitely going to be in the 95 percent of people who fail and this is one of the most powerful things that we can get in entrepreneurship right? 95% fail, 5% succeed. But we 100% have the choice about whether we are in the 5% or whether we are in the 95%. So if you approach things with the right attitude, you can choose whether you're 100% going to be in the 5% who succeed. And here's why. If you imagine two people joining the gym, okay? And one person, person one, shows up and they're like, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not really happy with the way that I, my weight, I'm not really happy with the way that I am, but I don't really want to push myself too hard. And I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not really going to do this if I'm tired in the evenings and I don't want to do certain types of workout and I don't want to change my diet as well. Like I, I like the food that I'm eating too much. And, you know, to be honest, if it gets too hard, I'm probably going to give up. Now, person two, Imagine they show up to the gym and their attitude is, I'm right, I've had it. I'm sick to death of, of the way that I am, my weight, my body. I must change. This is more important to me than anything else. There's nothing that I won't do to make this happen. I'm going to get a personal trainer. Whatever they say I'm doing, I don't care how I feel. I don't care whether I'm sick. I don't care whether I'm tired. I am committing to this. No matter what it takes, I'm doing it. And I will put everything on the line. I will publicly declare this. And I will not stop until I've created what I want to create in my body and in my life. This is more important to me than anything. Now, out of person one and person two, right? bear in mind that only 5% of people are going to succeed in the gym, same as business. Out of those two people, who do you 100% know is going to succeed? Person one or person two? Type it in chat if you want but I'm pretty sure we all know the answer. Exactly, person two, 100%, two, 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 every two. Everybody knows, we all know, the person two who decides to show up with that attitude is the one who will be in the 5% who succeed. And if we know with 100% certainty that based on their attitude, they're gonna succeed, whose choice is their attitude? Their choice. They have complete control over their attitude. So they've chosen to be in the 5% who succeed. And all of us on this webinar, we already instinctively know they're in the 5% because they've chosen it, because they're showing up with the right attitude. So as we go through this conversation about starting an online business, we've got to pay real attention to whether we're showing up as person one or whether we're showing up as person two. Why is this important? 
How far are you willing to go? How hard are you going to push yourself? Are you going to be in the 95% who fail and give up when it gets tough? Or are you going to be in the 5% who do whatever it takes and figure it out until you succeed? That's the distinction. Okay. So, yes, attitude determines altitude. Love it, Lewis. Brilliant. St uh, Stefan, hello, just came in, trouble with the Zoom app. No worries, buddy. Welcome. So, what we were just talking through was the attitude that we show up to business with and why that's going to dictate whether in the 5% who succeed or the 95% who fail. And with that in mind, uh, we're now going to focus on the, what, what it really takes, like what are the actual steps that it takes to succeed. OK, if we're deciding we're going to be in the five percent now, as we go into this, let me pull up the slides quickly. As I mentioned at the start, this webinar is going to be about you. OK, so if you now know if you're, you're clear that this is important to you and there's reasons why you want to create change in your life, like why is it that an online business may be the path for you? And with that in mind, type in chat down below. Right type in chat or Q&A, what is holding you back from starting? What challenge are you facing right now that is not allowing you to move forwards and start creating that future you want to create? What's the challenge? Is it finances? Is it the right education? Is it, you know, getting a mentor? Is it knowing how, what the first steps are? Is it um, fear of putting yourself out there? Is it fear of failure? All right? You tell me. What's holding you back from starting? And then we're going to focus this conversation around this and what that is for you. Because if you're able to overcome those challenges, whatever's holding you back, and they weren't there and they were gone, that then frees us up to actually move forwards and to make a start. And once we make a start, you take the first step, it's easier to take the next step. But once you take two steps, you can keep taking those steps. And before you know it, you've taken 10,000 steps and you look back and you're like, I can't believe how far I've come and the result that you've created. So while you guys are typing that in chat, what's holding you back? These are, this is a snapshot of some of the questions that we got from um, some of you might have seen the questions form that I sent out via email before this webinar. Uh, so some of the questions that we got were, um, you know, what kind of business can be started online without investment? We'll touch on that. Uh, how vital or necessary is data protection for a fledgling business? We can touch on that. Um, I'm a nurse by prof profession. I have zero experience on where to start as an online entrepreneur with no skills. So many sites out there don't give a concise step-by-step -step path to follow. Kindly help. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know exactly how to start and what to sell. I don't have any idea how to start a business, like what kind of business should I start? I don't have a business idea yet and how I uh, know uh, how much money is required to fund a company. I don't know where to start. How can you start with little or no outlay? Okay, brilliant. Right, um, and also as well, I've got a Zoom window that's just in my way. I'm just gonna try and move it quickly, but there we go. Um, and also I'm 14 years old, don't have access to a lot of money and time, so I can't start a business. Although I tried before to start one last summer holiday, but because of the limited time and the tight budget, I couldn't get the results I was looking for. Looking at the bright side, at least I learned something that might help me in the future. So I just wanted to know if you have any suggestion for me to do to try and start a business at a young age to secure my future and make my family life better, more secure and free. I love this question, mate. This is incredible. So if you're on this webinar right now, um, amazing like i i love that attitude at such a young age to be taking this on from the word go brilliant um, and then finally what's the first step to take how can i get motivated and stay focused so what i'm noticing from these questions is one of the pretty much the main theme in everything is how do i start and what like how can i do it with little investment or how can i make how can i get started um i suppose in a way that's more cost effective so Two business models that I will touch on here, okay? E-commerce and affiliate marketing. Now, both of these business models are, in my opinion, they are the most effective way at the moment to be able to um, create a business that creates time, financial, and geographical freedom. Now, if you're starting a business 
with the idea and the intention of creating some form of freedom in your lives for yourself or for your family, then if you can understand how these models work and actually leverage these models, whether it's um, through your own products or someone else's products, this is what enables us to create an actual business where we're no longer trading time for money. So for example, there's other models like um, consulting or freelancing, um, which are good ways to start online. And a lot of people do start with the consulting route, which is like sharing your skills with other people and sort of coaching and mentoring. But the problem with these kind of models is that you're, you're still required to trade your time. You're still required to be there in the business to generate revenue. And as soon as you're not there in the business, like you're not earning revenue anymore. You're not, you're not generating revenue. And so therefore it's not really giving you that freedom. It's giving you a way out of a career and empowering yourself to be responsible for, you know, creating whatever it is you want to create in your life. But the freedom for me, when I started, this is one of the most powerful aspects. And you're going to hear a couple of shares from a couple of people on the call um, before we wrap up about how they kind of approached this and what was their uh, focus when they first started. What business models did they go for? What were the challenges they overcame, et cetera? Okay. So the way e-commerce works, e-commerce is physical products. Now, there's a lot of different variations of this business model, but if people are starting in e-commerce, they will typically either do what's called Amazon, Amazon FBA, or they will do Shopify, which is a, 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 an online store building software. So it's like website builder. And with Amazon, you can sell products on Amazon, either your own products that you've developed, which is the more complicated way of doing it. And it can be very long winded. And I would not recommend starting <laughs> with developing your own products from scratch. Or you can use other um, companies products, other manufacturers products, and either adapt them and brand them as your own and sell them yourself through Amazon or your own store. Or you can do what's called drop shipping, which is where you're directly selling products that a manufacturer, manufacturer is creating. You're advertising them online, either through Amazon or your own website. And then the manufacturer will automatically receive any orders, any sales that you make through your store, and then they will ship it directly to the customer who's purchased through your store. Okay, so drop shipping is a way to start without developing your own product and without um, uh, having any inventory, holding any stock whatsoever, and enabling you to, to really get a feel for where the demand is, like where are the customers online that are interested in the products that you're selling. Now, there are some cons with drop shipping, so some of the pros. Some of the cons are that it can be quite a bit more expensive because you're only ordering one unit at a time. And it's obviously up to the manufacturer to create those products and it's cheaper for them to make a thousand units than one unit. And also as well, like if you're, if you're doing that, it means that you're more limited about the type of products that you can work with because not most manufacturers would rather sell a thousand units of a product or even manufacture it in, in the first place. So it tends to be fairly common products that you would um, focus on with the drop shipping route. So, if you're, however, let's say you've established demand for a product with drop shipping, and you then know that you can sell, you know, like, um, uh, I don't know, like a, an inflatable paddling pool or something, you've sold a few of them through drop shipping, you've sent them directly to the customer, you've, you've figured out that there's demand there for that product. What you're then able to do is maybe order a larger unit quantity from a manufacturer and then use Amazon, so you can stock with Amazon, and then you can actually sell the products through Amazon directly, and that will save you on logistics costs. So again, don't worry too much at that stage about the technical exact how-tos of how this works. I just wanna highlight the concept here. So e-commerce is a physical products business. Now, you can also uh, build, a, as I said, a Shopify store, so a Shopify store would be where you're physically selling products. And I'll show you an example here. This is one of my companies, um, which we've recently developed. And there we go. So we've actually um, just loaded it now. 
there you go. So we've actually put in our first order of a thousand units of this product. And this is something that we've actually developed ourselves. This didn't exist um, before we conceptualized it in, and came up with it. Uh, it's an eco-friendly, all vegan, non-harmful chemical, uh, bamboo, non-plastic deodorant product. And what it does, or, or what the plan is, is we're going to sell it with this reusable bamboo outer container. And then it's going to have a refill based subscription model. Okay, so this what, what we're looking at here is a Shopify site. So this is a super simple uh, theme where you basically just change the text and change the images and change where the buttons go and all that kind of stuff. And this then when people buy through this site, when we actually have product and they buy through this site, that automatically will then send an order through to Amazon, which is where we're going to stock it or it will be a, another um, uh, logistics company. But We'll stick with Amazon for now for this example. Um, and, and when somebody clicks to purchase through our store, Shopify automatically sends the order to Amazon. Amazon will have our stock and then Amazon will automatically send the order straight through to the customer. Right? All happens on autopilot. And the point here that we really want to get is that when people buy through this store, me and I, I have a team now in Bamboo Bar, but if I was just launching this as a one-man band, this is the first business that I launched. I could be asleep, I could be patting elephants in, in Chiang Mai, I could be falling asleep at my laptop, uh, whatever it is, right? I can be doing anything else and this store will automatically, um, or when people buy through this store, the order is sent through, it's then sent to Amazon and Amazon then sends the product to the customer. I'm no longer trading time for money with the business model of e-commerce, okay? Number two, another business model, and this is the one that I physically, I started with, is called affiliate marketing. So affiliate marketing is where you're selling other companies' products and you receive a percentage of revenue for doing that. So if you picture this, right? Picture that you have, uh, or picture a typical business's um, process from marketing their product to selling their product and then fulfilling their product or service. Uh, and then there'll be support for the product. They'll also have like operations and they might have like HR, legal, finance, any other department in, in a normal business. Uh, and what affiliate marketing is, is if you imagine that all the, all the normal processes of, of, of a business as an affiliate company, you're taking over just the front end part, like the marketing and acquiring customers. And the other, the business that created the product or service deals with everything else. So developing the product, product support, operations, et cetera, et cetera. Like everything else that is a normal part of the business is down to them. And you as an affiliate company do the front end part. So affiliate marketing is where you're effectively splitting the responsibilities of a normal business across two companies. And as an affiliate, you get the percentage revenue for doing the front end bit and they get the percentage revenue for doing the back end bit. There's a partnership arrangement with another business. And there are affiliate companies in pretty much every sector that you can imagine. All right, health and fitness is a big one. There'll be affiliate companies for like Forex and you know, buying gold and affiliate companies for travel, private jet hire, luxury boat hire. There's affiliate companies for you know, selling um, uh, things like, um, not medicines, uh, supplements. So supplements as well. There'll be affiliate companies for every train online training you can possibly imagine. Um, there's affiliate companies for cars, like Microsoft have an affiliate program. Um, Amazon have an affiliate program where you can actually be an affiliate for Amazon instead of selling products on Amazon. Um, loads and loads of companies. Audible, if you listen to audiobooks, Audible have an affiliate program. Uh, companies like Mind Valley, if you, you're into personal development, you might have come across Mind Valley on YouTube. They've got an affiliate program. And so the point is that whatever your passion is, you don't need your own product to start in business. All you need to do is start educating yourself on how to build an online business, how to market online, how to find customers for products. And then you can let another company deal with the product development, the product support, and all of that other stuff that goes with it. And you just master the most important part of business, which is customer acquisition. And if you can master this skill online, right, automatically acquiring customers, regardless of what you're doing, without trading time for money, 
using digital marketing skills, right? If you can do that effectively, then you can find customers for a business, you can generate revenue without trading time for money, and if you scale it then, you have created freedom in your own life. That is why for me, e-commerce and affiliate marketing, when I first started this journey, were the two business models that I really focused on. I didn't want to be a coach, I didn't want to be a consultant, I didn't want to be a freelancer learning how to like, you know, build websites and sell websites where I have to keep building websites if I want to keep earning money. Like that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to, to build a business that would operate regardless of what I was doing. So affiliate marketing and e-commerce were the two parts. And so with that in mind, the biggest question, like pretty much everybody um, whose questions I read out earlier on in this call, the problem was, how do I start? Like, where on earth do I go? And I'd be looking on YouTube, I'd be looking on Google, and you can find anything on the internet. Like, every single thing you could possibly need or want to know about starting an online business, for example, it's on Google, it's on YouTube for free. It's all there. In the same way that you can find absolutely anything about how to get an incredible athletic shape online, it's all there. Every workout, every nutrition plan, every single thing about diet and fitness that you can possibly imagine is online on the internet for free. But again, even though we all have access to that information from our phone, it's literally in our fingertips, we've all got it, we can all access it for free. Why is it that so few of us are able to make that start? I didn't, I couldn't. It's information overload. There's so much stuff. We don't know what's the good information, what's not the good information, what steps do we take now? Like, I've done this, what do I do next? Where do I move forward from here? It's just too overwhelming. There's too much stuff. And so for me, when I, when I was in this space and I was like, how do I start? I had to find someone or people or a community. I had to find people who had already done it first and had left a roadmap to follow. I needed a roadmap. Without a roadmap, I was paralyzed, couldn't do anything. And so that was the most important thing is how do I find, how do I get in the environment with people who have already created this result that I want? And that was one of the biggest things that I discovered. Okay. Now, before I go any further down this thread, there's a couple of people on the call, Peter Bolton and the man with the best name in the history of all names ever, Mr. Bruce Lee, uh, who have started in online business fairly recently and um let's start with peter do you want to go first just because you're first on my screen um if you could give my friend a little bit of an overview of um when you were in this space and you were thinking of starting what was the biggest challenge that you were facing and how were you able to overcome it to ultimately make that start buddy yeah no that's that's a great question and well done this is a great call so um I think it's very easy to get ahead of ourselves so that when people mm. are very new to this space, they can't kind of quite connect with what everything is all about. There's like too much, it's overwhelming and, and so on and so forth. So I think the best advice I've got really for people is perhaps reflecting back to a year ago when I started and my absolute skepticism about, yeah, this is a business opportunity. I don't mm. think so. But I've got that personality luckily that allowed me to sort of lean into it and go, well, I'm going to do my own due diligence and I'm going to find out whether I think there is a business opportunity here. And in doing that, uh, in a variety of ways, I started to say to myself, there is an opportunity here and we can do something here to make money, to make a difference in, in what I'm trying to achieve. And then, like everything, it starts with that single step, doesn't it? And that single step really is listening to the training. The online training from SFM has been outstanding. Um, I'm not particularly computer or IT, so I thought, am I going to struggle in this space? But just by listening to the training, I took it step by step. I went through the modules. I found myself in the position of knowing what I needed to do and starting to learn how to do that. And for me, the route that I wanted to take, which is the same as yours, Dan, I think, with YouTube marketing, mm -hmm. it was working out, okay, what sort of things do I need to make sure that I know about that I can put in place that will then start generating sales leads for the business, which ultimately yeah. people saying, yes, I'd like to know more about the opportunity, please. Can you tell me more? 
12 months now down the line, I can look back at last October and go, well, when I started marketing, when I started my video adverts being on YouTube and promoted on YouTube to people to see them, I generated 18, I will call them leads in my first month. And I thought, well, that's pretty good. <laughs> so that works. So it proved to myself, if you like, over some of the skepticism that by mm. walking the steps, by doing the actions, by putting the work in, by putting the marketing out there, something happens. And then with a long story cut short, which I'm very happy to go into a long story, but I won't today, um, but just to kind of help give confidence to other people on this call, almost every single month without exception, without spending more money per month on my marketing, I increased the number of leads that I was generating. Last month, 660 leads. And that still kind of blows me away that I started there with 18 sales mm. inquiries, 18 leads last October. Every single month, almost without fail, that number has grown. And last month I've created 660 leads. It's insane. <laughs> so I feel very bad. confident that you know I'm on the journey um, and every month I go, you know, is this going to work out and so on and so forth. Mm. But I think to take myself back 12 months and think, should I do this? Is it going to work? Is it going to create a result for me? It's easier with hindsight 12 months later to go, yes, it is. And yeah. my journey is going in the right direction consistently every month. And it keeps growing and building. And I now have what I think is a scalable business where if I put more money into the marketing, it's going to scale up. and I'm going to get more and more results, irrespective yeah. of whether I put more money in or not to a certain extent. Brilliant. So you're at the point now where you're, you're sort of generating revenue, you'll take that, you'll reinvest, scale, generate revenue, reinvest, scale, and not trade in time for money to do that. Exactly that. And, and yeah. the, the way that the results happen, as you know, of course, but you know, you get that email in your inbox, you know, mm. congratulations from Stuart and Jay, you've got another member that's joined or you've got another product sale. It can happen yeah. at any time, 24 hours a day. You know, and you can get up in the morning and have your shower and get yourself ready for the day, but then you check your laptop and you go, there's some more customers. And yeah. I didn't have to go out and get them as such. I mean, they're just happening almost magically in the yeah. space. And when you think of the size, or when I think of the size or the volume of the marketplace we have, of course, it's huge. There are something like, I don't know, 70 million people in the UK alone, let alone the rest of the world. And actually, yeah. my marketing is only going to certain sections of people within that UK market. So again, when I'm ready, I can expand and scale my business into Europe and other English speaking countries as well, you know, when I'm ready to do that. So it's, it's a great journey, but I think it's easy to forget when you start, what was all that about and, and what was it that managed to push you forward and keep motivating you to take the action and do the things. And I think you've mentioned that partly today anyway, it's the community, it's the people that you're touching base with, you know, for you and I to have this conversation, we didn't know each other a year ago, um, yeah. we've got to know each other a bit now. And it's great to be able to communicate and ask for help and support from people that, you know, are ahead of you in the journey as you are <laughs> awesome share mate is that helpful brilliant yeah thank you very much and and to kind of clarify a couple of points there of, of like thank you for highlighting that because that's so powerful um the partnership so peter you mentioned sfm so that's the same company that i'm partnered with through scrap the nine to five peter, peter's partnered with through his company um and for anyone who's not clear when when he's referring to the the emails coming through from Stuart and Jay saying, hey, congratulations, you made a new sale. That's, that's the partnership connection between his business and the business that he's an affiliate, that his company is an affiliate for, where when he gives them customers automatically through his marketing, they then automatically credit him for those customers. And that process happens, again, without him trading time for money. So Peter, thanks for giving that perspective, buddy. Good share. Cool. Um, so I'm going to whiz through, uh, Bruce, what we'll do, if we could have a quick overview from yourself as well, similar kind of question, then I've got a couple of things based on Peter's and probably uh, what you're going to share that we can cover to really help tie down the question that I think is still in everyone's minds, which is, okay, this sounds good, this makes some sense, but how, where, do, where on earth do I go? Like, how do I find an affiliate company? Like, what steps do I take? How do I, do I need to build a website? How do I do that? Do I need to do this? How do I market? Da, 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 da. I want to try and you know tie this down a little bit before we go there Bruce 
same question. When you started, what was the um, biggest challenge that you faced? How did you overcome it? And really, like, how has that journey panned out for you over the last few months since then? Can't hear you, mate. Got no audio. Try um, in the bottom left corner. I can see you unmuted, but if you click the little upwards arrow, see if it will let you select the audio device. This is, this is a top tip, guys. Doesn't matter how long you're in business, there's always going to be technical problems where this, this webinar software, Zoom, will, will cause like a spanner in the works or something. Perfection is the enemy of great. Don't worry about being perfect. Just go, oh, there we go. We got you? I think I did hear you. Nothing. Uh, uh, do we have sound? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear oh, me? Fantastic. Yeah. I can hear How are you, you doing, buddy? Very good. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Don't Biggest you worry. Challenges, technical challenges. Put in the uh, microphone in the right hole. <laughs> good work. You got it. Well done. <laughs> So, um, biggest challenges that you've overcome in the early stages and, um, yeah, so what, what was it that made you decide to start in business down the path that you did as well? Me, um, it was one of those exercises where I kind of future paced what my future would look like if I stayed here for the next 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. I kind of did that exercise where I imagined myself at my own funeral and I thought, I wonder what people would say about me. Yeah, I think I stayed exactly where I was right now, and I thought, and uh, I listened to what people would say to me in my imagination. I thought that sounded so boring. Yeah, it's so inspiring, <clears throat> uh, and that filled me with dread, to be honest. So, um, I knew I had to make a change and go down this path of online business because I've done a lot of research around the, and on the sides and everything. I knew, you know, the opportunity was massive. You know, everything that was current at the moment says this is this is where you need to be online business. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is where the opportunity is, and uh, I could see my own my own industry changing completely. I mean, the whole high street was changing, mm -hmm. uh, automation was coming in. I mean, I felt like my job was going to be automated in the not too distant future. For instance, Google Google spent one million pounds with Moorfields Eye Hospital. They wanted to come up with an automated program on how to do um, eye checks automatically. They came up with it in three months. Wow. The reason it's not in the market at the moment is probably because it's not gone through the uh, legal stages and all that kind of stuff, but it's coming. It's coming thick and fast, really. So I wanted to, uh, yeah, I wanted to make a move quickly before, <laughs> before I got automated out of my job, to be honest. So. Got it. This is, that's such a good point. So, so, so there's a prime example of like automation coming into a sector yeah, yeah. and immediately a technology is invented and then a whole load of jobs, for example, are just whoosh, gone. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying thought really. And obviously online sales are, are getting bigger. I mean, the business model was set up in a, in a time before the internet. So you could see people were coming in and saying, I just want to shop around on the internet and have a little look around. And I was like, oh, well, you know, there's not much argument for that because it was more reasonably priced, but you know, everyone was selling the products I was selling, but everywhere. Yeah. You know, so, and, and because you're in one location, you're restricted to one geographical location. Whereas yeah. on the internet, you've got the, you've got the entire world to be honest. So, you know, you know, it was a, it was a no brainer for me. I had to do it. Got it. So, so your transition came from a place of really like an awareness of what was going on in the world around you and recognizing that because of that, you could either get left behind or you could get with like the opportunity and start actually building your own company, yeah. leveraging the internet. And yeah, um, it was, yeah. I still got a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get it done now. And so when the time comes, I'm ready. <laughs> got it so you're so you're at the moment you're you're building your business in your spare time you still got your full-time job and then you use the income from the job to kind of help i i guess in in the business side of things mm -hmm. um and then have a plan of action to leave the job at some point in the future like how's that looking um it's it's it's, it's in progress i'm not i'm not as yeah. far as you guys are um but yeah i'm making good progress in my youtube campaign at the moment i can see i'm getting conversions and all that kind of stuff so i'm hoping i'm on the uh the cusp i'm hoping anyway but you know mm. i don't want to stress it out i just want to keep going keep going slow and steady brilliant and, uh, 
when the time comes, when uh, when it comes out, I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that's awesome, mate. And would yeah. you say so? So when you've been on this journey, um, and I love that you were like you had that awareness of what what was happening in the world, and that was like a spark for you to take action. Um, would you say was there like something specific about the community or about or an edu- like the education that you got involved in that really helped you? make much more progress than you would have made on your own or you know anything that you can really put your finger on that, that just helped you leapfrog um further ahead than you would have been without it uh pretty much everything to be honest because uh, no i was no techie i mean i could do facebook and youtube and stuff like that and click on the buttons but yeah technically yeah i thought how am i going to do this i had no idea where to start but yeah the, all the video training and everything step by step took me through the whole thing and it was quite enjoyable in the end once you get it right um just watch the video stop it do the action clip on yeah. go on to the next bit it, it was pretty good really um it gets you there and there's always yourself to ask as well <laughs> um you're always there so <laughs> and everyone else in the community to be honest everyone else is asking when you go when you start at a certain stage everyone's asking similar type of questions and all the answers come your way to be honest yeah everyone's figuring out the same thing at the same time and there's like a wave you just catch a wave and you just carry on and go along this journey with uh, everyone else at the same time and you make really good friends with them all and then you yeah. meet people like just come back from a workshop in london yeah awesome, met dan, man. dan the man for the first time as everyone said we all poked him made sure he wasn't <laughs> an alien <laughs> yeah so <laughs> oh, he's real yeah. and he's a lot taller than he looks on the camera as well thanks mate <laughs> <laughs> very true <laughs> yeah so yeah we, we do meet up meet up live and that that was a, a great game changer as well mm. to meet like all the all the guys on the same journey and everything it was uh, we just shared so much stuff because we're all on the same journey and we all just shared all our little golden nuggets and uh, all our um all our little mindset sh- mindset shifts and everything like that all the leaders were there it was great awesome Brilliant, mate. Thank you so much. Great share. Love it. And I, again, as I say, I, I love the, the spark that started this for you, that awareness. So, Bruce, thank you, mate. Appreciate you. Um, okay, so two powerful shares. I think um, to, tie, so to tie this down to where everyone on the call's at, which seems to be about, like, how do I make a start? How do I do it with, you know, if I don't have the capital, for example, um, and actually doing what it takes to get the result, as Bruce and Peter have, like, started to share with their journeys who would i wouldn't normally do this but who would like to see actually behind the scenes in the education platform and the community that they're talking about if you would like to see behind the scenes type yes in chat down below if you if you if you wouldn't (laughs) that's cool just type no that's fine but if you would like a behind the scenes look you know if you want to start actually figuring out how you can take the first steps like they have um, and, and, and help yourself move forward down this path, uh, being able to see behind the scenes might help. So if you want to see, okay, yes, yes, please. Yes, 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 me. Yes, yep, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, that's fairly resounding. Let's do it. So I'm going to show you behind the scenes of how this actually, or, you know, what this is about, how it works. Um, so this was, so SFM, Six Figure Mentors, is the, the company in September 2016 Uh, that I came across when I was looking about how to start an online business. It's the same one that Bruce came across. It's the same one that Peter came across, who have both shared. Um, They've been in the industry now for over a decade. They're partnered with uh, LinkedIn Learning, partnered with Microsoft. They're partnered with Digital Marketer, uh, who are, they they did Traffic and Conversion Summit in San Diego in February for 6,000 people. Uh, Richard Branson was a speaker there. If you're in the marketing space, you'll know people as well, like Brendan Bouchard. Ryan Dice is the co-founder of Digital Marketer, all partner with SFM. Okay, So this company, for, for as I say, over 10 years, has been supporting people in how to build an online business. And one of the first things that really helped me make that start was figuring out how to actually take the steps. Okay, So what they do is they have, um, and this is the SFM dashboard, So they start people off with actually learning what steps to take to build an e-commerce or an affiliate marketing company, step by step, right? So prepare your, like prepare your business. And then it goes through like advertising online, how website building works, how to build email marketing lists, 
how to focus on providing value to customers, products promotion, why high ticket. Then it goes through picking your path. Okay, so there's an orientation workshop, which is super powerful to really dig into, you know, getting off on the right foot down the, the path that is right for you. Um, 90 day action plan. So again, steps to take, modeling leaders who have already done it. Uh, then planning your promotions, which is what Peter was touching on, you know, getting started with marketing, going through, you know, how affiliate programs work, the marketers foundation, that's going to be like target market, the power of bridging, the process of bridging, how that works, like psychology, influence, all these kind of things. You'll then go into preparing your platform. So this is where you'll go through setting up websites, um, building email follow-ups. So each of these sections that I'm clicking into has got like five video modules here. And as, as Bruce said, you just go through step by step, you just follow it, this is how you do, click this, click this, do this, do this, do this. And it enables you to really get that foundation in place. And then module five is where you start to transition into, right, go, let's actually take action, launch campaigns, put yourself out there, put your website out there that you've then built using this training. It's completely step-by-step -step and module-based, okay? Now, what I also mentioned is that my company, Scrap the 9 to 5, uh, since September 2016, right, since I was going through this education and really figuring out how this worked and launching the first company, Scrap the 9 to 5 is partnered with SFM. So what we do is we now offer supplementary services to help people with the SFM process and enable them to actually build their own business. So the backbone of this, which you, if you were to start with SFM, you'd be a part of this as well. This is the Scrap the 9 to 5 private entrepreneurial community. So you have people constantly asking questions and getting advice and guidance. And this is a meetup that we're having on Monday in Birmingham. So a lot of us are going to the Birmingham NAC event with Grant Cardone and Gary B. Um, and there's quite a lot of people there that are, uh, are going to be meeting up for a scheduled Scrap the 9 to 5 meetup on Monday evening. Uh, we've got Alex Franklin, who a lot of you guys, if you've started already, might have spoken to Alex. She does one-on-one -on -one support calls and helps people, and she's got her own webinar that she does in this group as well now. Um, a lot of people as well, you know, there's constant engagement and interaction. Um, if I keep scrolling through here, there's content that we'll create and put in there to help people move through with the mindset things and the online business things, and um, congratulating people for taking pro making progress. Um, webinar, webinar, webinar. So know your numbers and we do, so this is webinar number 114. So each week we cover your questions live. So any questions from the week then get answered live on the webinar. You can then implement and take action and move forward in your business. Typically we'll have, um, so people joining the call, it will be normally two screens of Zoom. So there's not, there's not like so many people that you can't come out and you know, have face-to-face -face conversations or just put questions in chat. Um, also we do supplementary training for things like how to start with YouTube, um, knowing your numbers, uh, resources to like plan your business and strategize properly, guidelines for like mentoring and et cetera, et cetera. So a lot of resources there. We do mentorship, we do accountability groups, we do support structures, and all of this supplements the SFM's education. Okay, so I truly believe, and this is, this is super important to mention, I, I really believe that the days of like some online business guy coming on a webinar like this and saying, Hey, like, this is what I know. And this is my knowledge and buy my course and go through my course and it will teach you how to do this. And then you can go away and do your business and be successful. Like just an online course. I think those days are coming to an end because the amount of value that is available now with companies like SFM, like their platform, their community, their live meetups, their webinars, their support, all of this stuff. And also, one other thing that I haven't even showed you, which I completely forgot, which is super powerful, is they have an entire, it's called the Digital Business Lounge. It's an entire suite of website building tools, graphics creator tools, um, fun, like sales funnel creation stuff, like an entire support team that will help with like any technical challenges that you're having. So all of this stuff here, again, all included with your Essential Membership. This is why I truly believe the days of like someone just selling a course are numbered. Because you, like with, with this sort of value available to people, like this inclusive support structure to help people actually start on this journey and have coaching and support and mentoring and webinars and live interactions and so on. An online course is just like, what is that? <laughs> you know, it's not really gonna, 
if you picture like, I love analogies like the gym because everyone can relate to it. Um, if you picture someone just saying, hey, buy my health and nutrition course versus an immersive like 90 day action plan with a personal trainer, one on one coach holding you accountable, a direct nutritionist, and nutrition plan, constant training from every angle you can imagine. Like who, who's going to get the result? Like with what support structure will someone get that result? So I think you can tell that even after three years, I'm still super excited by this because like the, in this Facebook group um, that I showed you, the people that are coming through and we now have in this, in this community, um, let me just go to the main page. How many members do we have now? Have we hit 3K? Not quite. 2,940 members that you see here. And these are people at all stages of their online business journey. And the whole environment is about collaboration, giving back, supporting others, right? This is not an environment where people are like, oh, I found the marketing strategy. I'm going to keep it to myself and I'm not going to share it with anyone. This is an environment where everyone holds each other up and lifts each other up. And a phrase that I love is like a rising tide rises all ships. For example, if I share as much as I learn, you know, like whatever I've learned, with particular marketing strategies and then I put that out there I know that other people will then build on that and then we'll share what they've learned and that's going to empower me to move forward and this is what we do at live events all the time we have these masterminds and we collaborate and share and put these ideas out there so that for me like to have that kind of structure behind me when I was figuring out how to start my own online business that was instrumental because I compare it to how much time would I have spent on YouTube or Google looking for course after course after course after course or video after video after video to self-educate with no support, no one around me, no one to turn to when I got stuck. And you will get stuck. Like there will be challenges. As I said at the start of this webinar, I am not going to come on this call and say, hey, you're going to get rich in 30 days. Just buy my stuff and you're guaranteed success. It's bullshit. doesn't work like that. 95% of people will fail. 5% succeed you get to choose whether you're in the 5% or the 95%. It will take effort. doesn't matter how much support you get, you've still got to do the work, right? Got to stress that, that is key. But if you're in that space where you're ready to start, you're ready to take action, you want to really push yourself to start learning these things and have this kind of structure and support around you, we have made it as easy as physically possible through our partnership with SFM for people to get started. So if you want to, here is what you do. Share screen, there we go. So I've put everything through one, just go to this link, www.scrapthe925.com forward slash get dash started. That's gonna redirect you to a page by SFM and Stuart Ross. You'll recognize Stuart Ross from the photos at the start of this webinar. Uh, that'll take you through to a page where you can submit an application to join SFM. Now, upon submitting your application, you will automatically get an email notification from me and Scrap the 9 to 5, inviting you into our side of things. We don't charge for anything, right? If you're going through the SFM journey, we supplement, we don't charge in addition to. So once you're going through the SFM journey, you get our Facebook group, our support, our webinars, our accountability, our mentoring, it's all included, it's all part of it. SFM membership so to join their essential membership is $297 and then $97 per month and as I say that will get you everything with Scrap the 9 to 5 as well and what we've done in addition so if you go to this link the application allows you to not pay the 297 right not commit even commit to that level first of all but you can do the application for $29.95 one-off payment, and then you get 30 days to check everything out that I've just shown you for yourself, see what it's gonna give you, go through the first module of the training, really get a feel for the community and the support and how this is gonna help you. And if at any point you decide, you know what, this isn't for me, I'm going another way, I'm doing this on my own, I don't wanna be in business, I wanna go in property or Forex or whatever, cool, no problem at all. How easy is it to cancel? You go in your back office, and you literally just go to account, change membership status, and then down here, you would just close account. Boom, 
or you can downgrade if you're like positioned at a higher level like essential membership as well and then you can just hold your account instead of closing it but literally click that i'm not going to do it because i don't want to close my account but <laughs> if you click that then you, you literally close your account within the 30 days you get an automated refund so when i say the days of online just an online course that you buy online are over this is why like the level of support that you have available and you can try it yourself for 30 days with no strings and then just automatically cancel if it's not for you. <laughs> like, couldn't be easier to make a start. It couldn't be more risk-free to make a start. And so for everyone on the call, like all the questions that we had about how do I start? How do I start? How do I start? How do I start? That's how I started. That's how Peter started. That's how Bruce started. That's how all the 2,940 people in my Facebook group started. Everyone started with the right education and support network. Can you do it on your own? Yes, you can. It is possible. It will take a lot longer though, and it will be a lot harder. That's the trade-off. It's just about, again, are you in the 5% who's like, I don't care what it takes. I'm doing this. I'm going to get every bit of support that I can, every little part of like whatever environment I need to be successful I'm going to immerse myself in it and I'm not going to stop till I succeed or are we the 95% who are like yeah I don't really want to invest in myself I'm not really serious about this I'm kind of dabbling I'm kind of looking da, da, da. I'm not at that stage yet and if so that's cool like that's fine honor where you're at but you've got to set the expectations right like to create a successful business and really change your life it takes a shift in mindset you can't dabble and create radical change. You've got to commit to building your future. That's what it takes. Okay, so hopefully that does help. I'm going to blitz. Uh, I'm just going to have a look through chats. I know there's about, I think, <laughs> blimey, about 40, 50 messages or so. So if, again, if I miss some questions, apologies. Um, Comment below if you've got something out of this and this has created like a shift in, in what your next step is or you've had some kind of breakthrough or some kind of realization, comment in chat below um, and, and we'll see if like if there's anything left to cover there for you or anything missing. If I've missed something, apologies, I'll do my best. Um, while I'm waiting for a couple of comments in chat, I'm just going to read what we've got already. Um, Okay, so Anna, knowing where to start, what cost implications there are, and if there are any legal requirements needed. Yeah, legal requirements. Um, when you're first starting in business, like the beauty of legal side of things and setting up a company, and um, somebody else mentioned, uh, like I think data protection as well. So with software that you're using nowadays, for example, email autoresponder software. So a lot of you guys are on my webinar because you received an email from me. Now I don't need to to really worry about data protection because through the software that I use, they, they automatically take care of it. The software is secure. Every, all the data that is held within that software is completely secure. I use that data responsibly, of course, like you know, when people opt in, they know what they're opting in for, their privacy is secured. Um, that's like, it's just ethical, just be ethical. You know, just show up in business how you'd want other businesses to show up to you. But in terms of data protection, the software that you use to gather data will, will actually look after the legal aspects of that. So Anna, there's not any legal requirements that you need. In setting up a limited company, because I know a lot of people have asked that question as well, um, I, didn't, I didn't set mine up until December 2016, which is when I started generating revenue. So I started in September and I was just, I wasn't even listed as self-employed. I was, um, I think I was listed as nothing because I quit my job and like I hadn't submitted a you know, tax form or anything um, because it wouldn't have been due till next year. So you, there's absolutely nothing stopping you doing what most people do, which is stay in your job, you stay as employed, you start building your business on the side and only when you start generating revenue, which believe me will be probably a little way down the line. So you've got other things to focus on before setting up the company, but only when you generate revenue, then you might think about setting up a limited company. Super easy. You can literally do it in five minutes online. I use a website to set up all of mine called companiesmadesimple.com um, or .co.uk. I think it's .com, companiesmadesimple.com. Um, you just fill in that application form. They do all the incorporation documents. You get it all sent back and then you have a company and it's listed on company's house. Um, and then at that point, when you really start generating revenue, which might be, you know, further down the line, you might then consider getting an accountant. And again, you'll just Google accountants in your local area. 
um, and you'll be able to find them, but lots of other stuff to deal with first. Focus on actually creating a business and generating revenue before worrying about tax and business setup and all that kind of stuff. That'd be my advice. Um, I had a question. I just spotted a question saying, uh, I'm afraid of losing money. I get that a hundred percent. Like I went through a big journey, um, which I've talked about on my like private webinars quite a bit from January, 2017 to April, 2017. So that was month four through to about month, um, seven of my business. Um, and I really had to, to, to work through a lot of fears to do with the financial side of things. And it was, um, it was that shift that I was able to go through where, where I stopped looking at it as like losing money, right? It's putting money out there. And I'm like, oh, I didn't make a return on that money and it's gone. And therefore I've lost something. And I started looking at it through the lens of, I know that I'm going to get there because I'm not going to stop. And therefore I'm either going to succeed or I'm going to die trying. If I die trying, I won't care about what money I have in my bank account because it won't matter. <laughs> I'll have more important things to focus on, right? And then if I succeed, it won't matter what I have to do to get there. Like all the money that I invested was just a part of the process of learning. It was just a part of process of, of, of figuring out how to become the person that ended up succeeding. And so, you know, investing money, there's a, there's a shift that people go through from employee mindset to entrepreneurial mindset. Because an employee mindset, you tend to, you, you work, you trade your time for money for a month, then you get a paycheck at the end of the month, and that's worth an amount of your time. And then if you were to lose that money, that's a month of your life gone, which, which really means something. Like that's, that's an implication. You don't want to give up a month of your life, you know? But on entrepreneurial mindset, right? You're, you're no longer trading time for money. So investing money, there's a detachment. It no longer means an amount of your life. Like if you're earning, you know, if you're earning a thousand dollars a month, then you scale to $10,000 a month, then you scale to a hundred thousand dollars a month. Suddenly your, what you had to do to get there again, becomes irrelevant. Even if you say you managed to burn, I don't know, 30 grand or something, right? And you just threw that down the pan. Well, if you ultimately succeed three years from now and then you're doing 100 grand a month, will you care that you burnt 30 grand on the path? Just perspective. And I'm not saying you're going to have to go and burn 30 grand on this path. <laughs> not at all. I'm just saying like whatever my view is that anything that you invest in yourself and your own education and moving yourself forward, you cannot waste that investment. It is not possible because that investment that you make enables you to level yourself up and you are the best investment you will ever make. The only time that losing money would matter is if we give up and we stick to trading our time for money and we're, you know, we're just doing that for the rest of our lives. And if that's what you want to do, that's cool. Again, everyone's different. Everyone's got different paths. But if you're deciding, I want to do this, I'm going to make it happen. I don't care what it takes. Whatever you invest in yourself is just a part of the journey towards succeeding. It will only ever mean a loss if you give up. So are you going to give up? Like that's for you to decide. Are you going to give up? If you know you're not going to give up, you can't lose any money you invest in yourself because eventually you'll succeed. It's inevitable. Okay. Um, right. Okay, I'm just scanning chat, scanning chat, scanning chat. Cool, great question. Um, I can't see your name because you're not on the webinar anymore. I can see ASA are the first few letters. Asa, I don't know. Um, knowing if it is worth putting my uh, putting my family in place number two for a while, so putting my family second for a while. Uh, and focusing on getting an online business going. Okay, so advice that I always, always, always give to people is if you're starting an online business to be there for your family, always be conscious that you're not completely sacrificing your family to build the business so you can be there for your family. Like, yes, there is a balancing scale because, of course, if you manage to get things off the ground, it's going to enable you to eventually be there and free up your time so that you're able to do that. But I, I would be wary of approaching it with the mindset of they're in second place and my business is in first place. Your priority is your family. That's why you're doing the business. 
So do always keep that in mind. Like don't sacrifice the family completely for the business. Just make sure that you're more efficient with your time. For example, put the kids to bed at whatever time they go to bed and then your window to work on your business is between like eight and 11 and then you go to bed and then you go to work. But then when you come home from work, kids time is six to eight or whatever, right? Create a system that enables you to, to focus on what is important. And I'm not saying this from experience because I don't have kids, but I just see a lot of this in people in the community who do have kids. The most important thing is remember why you're doing this. Like don't miss out on your entire kid's life because you're building your business for two years and you never see them and then regret that when you do have a business and your kids are like, well, you were never there. You don't want that. Okay. Um, high technical skills, low social skills, a lot of free time, no capital. Awesome. So in that case, skills, I, I love the questions around skills because if a skill is the challenge that's holding you back, fantastic because a skill is learnable. And if you just decide, I'm going to invest time into learning this skill. Great. You can learn that skill. It's just like learning to drive. Not one of us knows how to drive before we start driving for the first time, but we all learn just part of the process of learning a skill. Not one of us knows how to walk when we're born, but we learn, you know, disability aside. Okay. So, so the pro the point is that a skill is learnable if we decide that we're going to commit to it. So you just got to decide, like, is this important? You say, I'd love to start, but I don't have social skills. Great. There's something to focus on that's going to enable you to move forwards. And a community who can support you in building this skill set, probably going to be one of the most valuable things to build that skill set. Okay. Um, cool. Great question. Uh, Yusuf said, when you were talking about drop shipping, how do you make sure that the products are good quality and that they will arrive to the consumer, uh, to the customers? Um, order it yourself, right? So, so never sell something to somebody that you don't, you, you don't know is of good quality or is going to actually do what you say it's going to do. So if you drop shipping, first rule of thumb, if you're like, I like this product, I want to test it, I want to sell it. Great. Order it yourself on the manufacturer. See how long it takes to arrive. See what quality it is when it does arrive. And then, you know, right, is it worth it? If it's not, find another manufacturer. Um, community is key, community is key. Uh, Lois said, at which point do you become self-employed? Yeah, I think we kind of covered that one. So just like, if you work in a career, just stay as like employed. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that. <laughs> stay as employed in your company um, just while you're building the business. And then you don't need to worry about tax status or setting up a business or listing yourself as self-employed until you're generating any revenue. And at that point, You'll, you'll have leveled yourself up to the point where you know anyway, and you'll have, probably have a community around you who can help. Um, <laughs> Jacob said, Peter's wife, so sweet. <laughs> uh, I've got this fear of not being able to handle leads. If I'm not interacting with them, then I will lose them. Randeep, again, yeah, great, great point. So fear of putting yourself out there, whether it's like this kind of webinar, which again, I didn't start doing this until quite a long way down the line. Um, or fear of connecting with people. This is the kind of skill that we're able to master by getting the support of mentors and people in the community who have gone through this process as well. It's a question that does come up a lot of the time on my webinars um, and we'll handle it regularly. How to talk to your leads, how to send out emails, how to interact, how to overcome this fear. So yeah, like great stuff putting that question out there. Rest assured, this is the kind of stuff that you'll begin to learn how to master with the support of people around you. Um, Okay, uh, Asa, yep, you're welcome. Zoom hiccups, I know, I know about them. Uh, cool. Uh, 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 uh. Hi, Dan, James Tweed here. Finally got online to get info. Want to pack up job as soon as I can relate to that. Uh, but realize it may take time. Any more tips? Financially skin. Uh, what fees are there to start? So that was at 217. Okay, so if you've just dived in, mate. Um, the replay for this webinar, I'll send out to everyone who was registered to attend, which obviously you are because you're on the webinar. So I would I would suggest the most powerful thing would be if you watch it back because we, um, good news is we covered your question from a, a few different angles. So hopefully the replay should be really powerful for you. Um, in my opinion, what is the most high income skill that you can learn? Oh, great question. In my opinion, the most high income skill that you can learn I would say 
it's going to be a toss up between resourcefulness, in other words, figuring shit out, and communication, human beings. Because nothing in business happens until you're able to communicate effectively with somebody else and inspire and influence them to want to take action. And the more effective you are at communication, which again, it's like a skill, it takes practice, but there's a lot of support to help you master that and learn that. But the more you can effectively communicate and provide value to other human beings, the more successful that you'll be by making other people successful. And communication is at the key of that. And resourcefulness is, <clears throat> excuse me, resourcefulness is the ability to encounter a challenge, which will happen again and again and again in entrepreneurship, and then figure out how to overcome that. If you master that skill, no matter what challenge comes in front of you, you're able to level yourself up and keep moving forwards. So those two things, communication and resourcefulness, I would say um, are definitely the top two, in my opinion. Uh, Kevin, you're welcome, buddy. And uh, yet, yeah, Darren, understand people communication. Absolutely. Resilience. That is another one, actually. Persistence. Never give up. If you get that right, again, you'll, you'll figure out how to be resourceful enough. You'll figure out how to learn the skill of communication if you refuse to quit. So massive one as well. Okay, guys, I know we're 20 minutes past the top of the hour. Thank you so much for your questions. I hope that I have given some insight, covered some of the angles um, to help people make a start. Again, one more time, if you're in this space where you're like, right, I want to get involved in this kind of community, this kind of support, have this module-based training, figure out exactly what the next steps are for me, just go to scrapthe9to5.com forward slash get dash started, and that will redirect you to an SFM sign-up page. Go through the application process. Again, you don't even have to do the $297 at this point. Just do the $29.95. Check it out for yourself. Use it. See if you like it. You'll automatically get invited into my, my community, my Facebook group. You'll automatically get access to the accountability, the mentoring, the support, all part of the process. Um, yeah, so hopefully that helps everybody make a start. Um, cool. Good stuff. Uh, oh, I've just spotted there are a couple of final questions in Q&A. Mm -hmm. Emma Wilde says, I think I'm focusing on the wrong things. What are the daily tasks that I need to focus on and do each and every day to progress? Brilliant. So one quick thing that I'd say on that is get clear about exactly why it is that you're doing what you're doing. So have your why, your vision, what you want to create. Then start figuring out who has already created that vision and then model them to look at what steps did they take. If you can find out what steps they took, what you're then doing is you're building your daily method of, of operation, excuse me, building your daily method of operation around what you need to do to make those steps happen, right? So for example, let's say you've decided, I wanna build a successful affiliate business and I wanna do it in the, I don't know, the, the um, education sector and I wanna, learn from these people who have successfully done it and what they did was they uh, learned how to build a website <clears throat> sorry i got a frog in my throat learn how to build a website learn how to um you know maybe market on youtube let's say you want to go on video you so you learn how to market on youtube and then you figure out as well how to um then build an email list and convert subscribers by putting powerful messages out there that help give them value All right so if that's what somebody did they marketed on YouTube, they built an email list, and they sent value to their subscribers to then convert to sales through their affiliate partnership. Then you figure out, well, what do I need to learn and what do I need to do to make that happen? That becomes your daily method of operation. Okay, and again, hopefully what we've talked about on this webinar has, has helped and given some context there. Um, David Bates said, information overload about how to start and what platforms to use. Yeah, again, get that. Um, there's a whole load of different stuff out there. Um, my advice would be do what I did, do what Bruce did, do what Peter did, and just get an education. And, and rather than trying to figure all of this out yourself and look at all the different stuff that's available, just immerse yourself in a community and follow a, a, an education platform that maps out how other people have already done it. Okay. Um, Cool. Haven't got money to start. Need job security. Have wife and two girls to support. I'm 60 years old now. If this doesn't work, where would that leave me work-wise? All right, brilliant. So with this kind of consideration, like if you've got dependents or commitments or like house and mortgage and all this kind of stuff, 
it's about is I always look at it again it's kind of a balance on one hand you've got the mindset that I talked about on this webinar which is whatever it takes I'm not going to quit I'm going to make it happen I'm going to do you know what other people have done and I will not give up until I succeed like that is important and instrumental there is also a, a balance of setting yourself up so that you're if it, like whatever the worst case scenario is in any situation always ask yourself what would I actually do if that were to happen so for example, you've got a wife and two girls to support. So what can you afford to invest in your business and building it and educating yourself? And if you were to completely crash and burn down that path, what contingency plan would you have to fall back on? What could you actually do? Could you drive for Uber? Could you, have you got money that you could pull for somewhere else to tide you over until you find another source of income? Are you waiting till for five years till your pension kicks in? What's gonna happen during that five years? And the more that we can get very specific, right? Go face the worst case scenario. This is so important. The more we can get super specific about if we were actually in that space, what would we actually do to solve that problem? We'll realize that there's a lot of different options that we can do if we're resourceful enough to figure out how to navigate that challenge. Again, that's resourcefulness. So I don't know exactly what the right answer is for you. I don't know enough about your situation, mate, but I would certainly say, Look at what it is you want to achieve. Look at what you are willing to, or what, what you need to commit to make that happen. Look at how you can find what it's going to take to make that happen. And then look at if the worst were to happen, what would you then do to move through that challenge? Like how would that work? And get very specific. And just always recognize that throughout your entire life, and I already know this because this applies for everyone on the call, but throughout your entire life, Whenever your back has been against the wall and it's been do or die, you have figured it out. And I know that because you wouldn't be on this webinar if you hadn't. You've got successfully throughout your entire life to this point, this moment, right now. You are here on this webinar having this conversation. I assume you're safe. You're in a safe environment. I assume you haven't got like a tiger that's just burst through your door and you're in mortal danger. You're right now in this moment of your life completely safe. And if that's the case, you've successfully got here. And so it means whenever your back has been against the wall, you've always figured it out throughout your entire life. So just have that trust and that faith that you've got this. Like you can do this because you always have and you always will. Human beings, when it's do or die, they tend to do. Always remember that. All right. We're going to wrap there. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate every single one of you. Hope that has helped. Hope that is powerful. Um, any follow-up questions, then just hit reply to any emails that I have sent out. I'll ping the replay out for everyone on the call or everyone who registered. Um, so you will receive that shortly. Um, but yeah, let us know if there's anything we can help with. My emails are looked after by my team. Um, so they're always read, always responded to. Um, but yeah, appreciate you. Have a great day, guys. And I will speak to you all very soon. Bye for now.